in this lecture we are going to talk about circulatory arrest now circulatory arrest is simply the stoppage of blood flow this is a condition in which the blood flow stops it is different from shock it is different from shock which we have been discussing so far in detail shock is not the uh, the stopping or the stoppage of uh, blood flow it is basically the in inadequate supply of nutrients to the tissue blood is flowing normally but the supply of nutrients to the tissue is decreased in circulatory arrest there is complete stoppage the the the, the blood flow completely stops and the most common causes for a circulatory arrest are cardiac arrest and the ventricular fibrillation now cardiac arrest and ventricular fibrillation they most of the time occurs in normal patients in anesthesia when the patients are being operated and they are giving the anesthesia on the operation uh, uh, table on the ot table most some uh, of the patient develop uh, develops these conditions although uh, these uh, effects nowadays have decreased so much with safe anesthetics but it is a side effect of anesthetics although cardiac arrest can occur due to a lot of other reasons as in myocardial infarction sometimes with a heavy with a bigger myocardial infarction or uh, due to arrhythmias ventricular fibrillation can develop but in normal patients in absolutely normal patient when they are being operated anesthetics can basically lead to circulatory arrest in which the blood basically stops flowing now the effects of the circulatory arrest includes permanent damage of the brain permanent damage to the brain suppose for example this is a blood vessel and it is supplying some part of the brain now if now if the blood flow stops movement if the blood flow stops for 5 to 8 minutes for 5 to 8 minutes some patients or around half of the patients will have up to some degree of brain damage around 5 to 8 minutes of circulatory arrest no flow of blood for around 5 to 8 minutes in any patient will lead to brain damage in around in some of the patient or in around half of the patients but but if the circulatory arrest is for around 10 to 15 minutes then it will cause permanent damage in the brain in almost all the patients in almost all the patients now what is the cause of uh, the brain damage what is the main cause of damage that occurs in the brain the permanent damage that occurs in the brain due to circulatory arrest now previously uh, the cause of the uh, circulatory arrest was uh, the cause of the brain damage due to circulatory arrest was, was considered as hypoxia hypoxia which is basically the decreased supply of oxygen to different uh, areas of the brain but different scientists uh, scientists have done different experiments and in which they have found that clots when formed in the small blood vessels when clots this is a blood vessel in in which the circulatory arrest has occurred the blood is not flowing and due to which small clots can be seen these are the clots which have been formed in the blood vessels which is supplying blood to the brain now these clots formed in the vessels have a bigger role in damage caused to the brain due to circulatory arrest previously it was thought that it was thought that hypoxia or the decreased supply of oxygen was the main culprit because of uh, stopping the blood flow or the, uh, uh, because of the circulatory arrest but now it has been uh, seen in different experiments that clots are formed and these clots are the prime culprit and to prove this thing by experiments what they have done is that once circulatory arrest is done without blood then no damage no damage of the brain occurs even for 30 minutes even for 30 minutes if the blood movement stops or if circulatory arrest occurs without blood without blood now if the blood is present in the blood vessels if blood is present in the blood vessels and the heart stops pumping the cardiac arrest occurs or ventricular fibrillation occurs but blood is present in the vessels then the damage will occur in 5 to 8 minutes or maximum damage will occur in 10 to 15 minutes in almost all the patients and this damage will be permanent but if the flow is stopped in such a way that there is no blood in these vessels suppose for example these are the vessels but there is no blood there is no blood the blood has been removed from these vessels and now no blood is flowing and there is no blood available in this condition the blood was present but the blood was not flowing in the vessels and if you remove the blood if you remove the blood outside and put it in a container and now the blood flow stops but there is no blood in the vessels then the brain tissue can survive they can survive up to 30 minutes even if this blood is put back into the vessel into this uh, experimental animal the brain can survive as high as 30 minutes instead of that 10 to 15 minutes it proves that basically the blood clots that are formed the blood clots that are formed in small vessels during circulatory arrest are the culprit they are the the clots are the culprit so if the blood is altogether removed and the circulatory arrest is induced in the absence of any blood then the brain can survive up to around 30 minutes similarly if 
if if experimentally we are basically inducing circulatory arrest by cardiac arrest or ventricular fibrillation but before doing that we heparinize the experimental animal we heparinize the experimental animal or we give streptokinase which will destroy any clots if formed the heparin heparin will not allow the clot to form in the blood and the streptokinase will basically break down any clot now this thing also basically prevents this thing also prevents the permanent damage in the brain even in the presence of blood even in the presence of circulatory arrest so basically circulate circulatory arrest is a condition in which the blood flow altogether stops there is no movement of blood and this condition is mostly ca caused by cardiac arrest and ventricular fibrillation which in normal patients occur nor in anesthesia but in people who have myocardial infarction or arrhythmias these conditions can develop what happens is that if the circulatory arrest occurs for 5 to 8 minutes up to half the patients will have some some damage in the brain but if this condition lasts for 10 to 15 minutes most or all the patients will have permanent damage in the brain this damage is most of the time due to clots clots formed in the blood vessels this damage of the brain is caused by the blood clots formed in the vessels that are supplying blood to the brain now if we induce the circulatory arrest in absence of blood if suppose for example we remove the blood and after removing the blood we induce circulatory arrest then the brain tissue can survive the brain tissue can survive up to 30 minutes without any tissue without any uh, uh, damage the without any damage or the damage will be minimal but this thing is done experimentally in ex, uh, in basically in experimental animals the second thing is that if before inducing an experimental circulatory arrest if the experimental animal is heparinized or is treated with streptokinase the heparin will not allow the formation of these clots these black color clots in the blood vessels and the streptokinase will basically dissolve any clot if they are formed it will also help it will also help or will be important in preventing the brain damage because the damage caused in the brain in circulatory arrest is most of the time due to clots and these things these experiments basically prove that if the blood is removed or the patient the, the animal the experimental animal is pre treated with such chemicals or such drugs which will basically not allow the clot to form or will destroy any clot they will basically minimize or they will basically prevent the brain damage to occur so that's all about the circulatory arrest and this was the last lecture of cardiovascular system next we will be starting the uh, renal system thanks a lot for watching the video